Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the McGonagall Boxing Podcast. Let's get straight down to it, shall we? Thank you for keep following me on YouTube, uh, Facebook and Spotify. Much appreciated. Um, right, so Deontay Wilder has finally spoken out, hasn't he? It's taken him nearly a year. But here he is. Um, two things he's saying that he wants to, to fight Fury, obviously. But... For the first time, he's kind of accepted that's probably not going to happen. He's targeting the rest of the elite in the division. So that's basically Anthony Joshua, who else is going to be tight with Tyson Fury. So who does that leave? Well, that, of course, leaves Andy Ruiz Jr., doesn't it? It leaves Dillian White, if you can get past Povetkin. Or Povetkin himself, if he beats Dillian White. Um, and you'd probably have to merge um, Joe Joyce and Joseph Parker in that as well, and Usyk, whoever wins out that triangle, but uh, I think the, the biggest name at the moment for him would be Andy Ruiz, so that's a great fight. Um, I just want to break that down, because it's a risky one, isn't it? Because, say for instance, whatever, you know, for some divine intervention, Fury, Joshua doesn't happen this year, can Wilder beat Fury, uh, Joshua? I think he can. Um, it's not going to be a boxing match like it was against uh, Fury, is it? Um, but, Joshua still has the size, the strength, and the power to back Wilder up. And we know when that happens, Wilder's like a duck out of water, isn't he? It's the Mike Tyson effect. He doesn't know how to fight going backwards. Um, And he's got a leaky defence. He panics. And if he panics against Joshua, Joshua's going to catch him in that overhand right and knock him out. There's no question. But it all depends on Joshua, doesn't it? Because if he starts tentative, like he did in the Ruiz rematch... In the Pulev fight for the first couple of rounds, if he starts stiff, um, predictable, and slow, then Wilder's going to put it on him and knock him out. There's no question. I mean, Wilder's just going to unleash hell, and a right hand's going to knock Joshua out. So it's, it basically becomes a case of who lands first. But I do think it depends on Joshua tactically as well. Um, he should be looking at the Fury blueprint. That's how you fight. That's how you beat a Wilder if you're big enough and strong enough to do so. And Joshua is. So if he fights like that, I give Wilder no chance. If he fights like he did against Ruiz in a rematch, and I can understand why he fought like that in a rematch, but that's not going to cut it against um, an in-shape, focused Wilder, or Pulev, like the first couple of rounds, then he's banging trouble. So it's probably 60-40 Joshua if they fight. As for Ruiz, that's a nightmare fight for Wilder because... Ruiz has proved he's a tough cookie, even out of shape, like 20 stone. He took some big punches off Joshua, kept coming. He's got an iron chin. The punch that floored him in the first fight, he just didn't see, did he? But he got straight back up and engaged straight away. He's one tough cookie. He's, what, in the, when he's fully fit, 18 stone, but built small but compact, and the fight's inside. And got a vicious left hook, really quick hands, quicker than Wilder. And if he catches Wilder... Then he's banging trouble. There's no question about it. Banging trouble. So, we have to gauge that one. We have to weigh that one up. We have to see. But, uh, again, for me, it's if Ruiz comes in shape, like he clearly says he is with, um, you know, Team Canelo, if he comes in shape and he's focused, then I have to give it 60-40 to Ruiz. I mean, Ruiz is still overlooked, still underrated, but we saw what he did with Joshua. Um, he can bang, he's got vicious hand speed, vicious left hook, and can take a punch. And he's a better boxer than, than Wilder. And if Wilder can't knock him out, which I even Wilder could struggle knocking Ruiz out, then he's banging trouble. So these are tough fights for, for Wilder. These are fights where I think he's not going in favour. Can he beat Ruiz? Yes, he can. If Ruiz is out of shape and slow and ponderous. Um, Wilder can get to him, um, but if what, Ruiz is, you know, coming at 18 stone focused, then it's a big ask, and it's a big ask against Joshua, so, you know, be careful what you wish for, Wilder, I would like to start getting him back into a ring with a lower level, uh, I've said this before, I'd like to see him maybe target the WBA champion at the moment, or indeed, you know, someone in that kind of similar vein, the European champion, even Alanis, um, you know, Chisora, um, you know, that kind of level, it's just slightly below the elite to get his confidence back, to get his timing back. Manuel Charles, another one, Brian Jennings, you know, these people that are kind of slightly past their best, but still good enough to pose you some questions and get your timing back. 
That's who I'd like to see him fight. Or even a Michael Hunter. Don't go in with the elite when you've had a year off and you've taken a battering. But Wilder's his own man. He's stubborn. You've got to admire he backs himself. Um, but he's still using excuses with the referee now, saying that it was a slow count in the first fight against Fury. And, it, you know, the referee stopped it too early in the second one. He's still using the loaded glove and the spike drink excuse. And Toy accepts he needs to make improvements on his defence. And Toy accepts he needs to fight uh, on the back foot as well as the front foot. And Toy, he realise, gets a jab. To set up that overhand right, he's not going to beat Tyson Fury, and I doubt he's going to beat a fully focused Fury, uh, Joshua or Ruiz. That's that. So, Wilder, it's in your hands. Start with a top 10, not an elite fighter. Build your defense, build your jab, build your confidence, then go after the big guns.